Hey guys, I'm Justin Powell from FutureCom, and I'm here today to show you a video on how to make a barbed wire fence. The reason I want to show you this is you've got to make sure you keep these big guys on the right side of the fence. Make sure they don't end up in the neighbor's yard or end up in the street. I've got tons of stories. Uh, if you don't know, we own a, a ranch up here in northern Denton County, and when we first bought the place and got cows, we had some issues with our fences, and I would come home and there would be police that had my cows corralled somewhere. I got a call from a neighbor about them being on a major road over here. So I learned my lessons the hard way. I'm gonna teach, uh, teach you some lessons today so you can avoid the same uh, problems in the future. Thanks for joining us. What you might not know is that barbed wire was invented in 1860 something or other. And it was actually one of the key reasons that we could uh, sort of tame the West of the United States because it allowed uh, farmers and ranchers to put up fences quickly and relatively inexpensively and allowed to, uh, uh, it, it penned in cattle. It was the first wire fence that, uh, that stopped cattle from roaming uh, because of the barbs within the fence itself. Okay, so I know some of you aren't probably very uh, familiar with tools, at least tools that are not a keyboard or a, uh, a phone, right? That's usually our working tools. Well, to build a fence, you got to do hard work and it and I don't mean 10 zoom calls while you're sitting on the couch I mean actual hard work digging into the earth uh, and moving dirt now the most important part of the barbed wire fence is this corner post and it's true on any corner of any field that you're putting barbed wire around this pen post has to not move they say that each of these strands of barbed wire can have up to a thousand pounds, half a ton of force on this post itself. That's why you dig these holes in deep. So using either your, your post hole digger or I would prefer a powered auger, you're gonna go down about three feet. This is actually a really long post. You're only seeing a little more than half of it right here. You're gonna drop that in there. You're gonna put in a concrete, quick set concrete that's made for fence building and you're going to drop that in and let it set up. In the same in the meantime, you're also going to do the same thing for a post here and you're going to do the same thing on a post over here. This isn't quite a right angle just cuz the way that that my fence is built here, but you're going to have these posts and they're going to be welded to this post. The whole purpose of these posts is to keep this one upright. Now, in addition to all the corner posts that you have to do, every 200 to 300 feet of straight line distance, you have to add in a, a double brace post like this. Cattle, you know, that can be up to 2,000 pounds, will push against these, in this case, pushing out, to try to get to the grass that's on the other side. Well, now that you have your corner post done, your brace post done, you've spent I don't know how many days of work doing all that, you begin to realize that was the easy part. So now we're going to get to some of the hard work. For a barbed wire fence, you can't just have posts on the corners, right? You have to have something for the barbed wire to connect. And it connects to these things called T-posts. Put a couple T-posts in the ground and let you see what it looks like. If you've never done it before, this is a T-post driver. It's not a lot of fun and it's really, really loud. So it's a lot of work. On a field like this, this is one of my side pastures. It's about two acres in size. On average, you're gonna have about 250 of these surrounding the whole field. All right, now, now's for the fun part. Got a few tools here. This is barbed wire sold in a spool. And then there's a special type of winch that's called a come along that we're gonna use to tighten the barbed wire. So uh, sit back and I'll run a strand here. Sometimes you get stung by wasps too. Ow. Well, in case you missed it, 
there's a wasp nest inside that pipe and uh, that wasn't a lot of fun to get stung so let's take care of that one let's take care of one there life on a farm that's how it goes Ta-da! Nice, straight piece of barbed wire. Now we got one more thing we need to do over here. I'll show it to you real quick. So what you'll find is that with every barbed wire fence on these T-posts, there's little ribs that stick out and the barbed wire is actually wired to each post and if this had five strands or six strands, every single one of those strands would be wired to the post here as well as here. So it takes a long time to do all of that across a two acre field or a 12 acre ranch. Okay guys. Repeat those steps five more times. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six wires. You go to each and every T-post. Make sure you have your wire locked on here so the animals can't push the uh, barbed wire open. And there's your barbed wire fence. Keeps these guys on the right side. They don't get to the wrong side and keeps things on the wrong side from getting in. Thanks for taking the time today. I appreciate it. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.